A government in Australia is forcibly taking over a hospital because it's pro-life. I mean, literally, they're, they're going to move in and declare it that theirs. This sort of acquisition of private property is something that we're used to thinking about what the USSR, various different communist regimes, but not really a Western free country as we at least thought of Australia in the pre-COVID world. But here we are. So, as you may be aware, Australia is split into various different territories. And one of those territories is Australian Capital Territory. The government there has moved in to mandatorily acquire Calvary Hospital in Canberra. So it's a Catholic hospital as such, they don't do abortions, um, and they are opposed to euthanasia. Right? Kind of expected. Well, the government disagrees and says that that's simply not good enough. And the government had to actually change the law and pass a bill in order to engage in this seizure of private, private property, which is unprecedented. And not just in Australia, but you just don't see this in, to use an old expression, the free world. And that's maybe, maybe it should stay an old expression because it's not particularly free. Again, they're discriminating against them for, for being pro-life in, in a very obvious sense, right? They, they don't do abortion, they don't do euthanasia, so they are trying to protect life and unwilling to engage in anything that intentionally ends innocent life. So they're being discriminated against for being a hospital that heals, you might say. And the, the bill they passed stipulates that this uh, territory's government will move in and acquire the premises on July 3rd. So it's a really, it's a really hasty thing, they're just going to kind of move in and and take over in a short period of time, which is probably intentional to try to prevent much time for there to be any sort of uprising, any sort of protesting, and so on. But I certainly hope that there is. A recent inquiry by uh, this government said that they were upset because there was an overriding religious ethos at the hospital. It's like, well, yeah, it's a Catholic hospital, so it operates according to, you know, the their Catholic ethos. Um, but ultimately, what's the ethos that's wrong? Oh, they're, they're protecting life. So if you're doing what ought to be considered an objective good, the government wants to shut them down, take them over, and force them to engage in the termination of life. Um, which is, it's deeply disturbing when you think about it, that that somebody could be so zealous in their willingness and desire to do something that is evil, right? Under the under the name of doing something that is good, because you got the you got the, you got the government saying, well, "This hospital is bad because they're unwilling to perform abortions. We're good because we are willing to perform abortions, and therefore we're going to go in, take it over, and and do this act of good, which is the killing of innocent human life." Um, when you really kind of put it in very plain language like that, you can kind of see just how messed up this is. And if they are going to just start seizing property of the, the the ideological opponents, you might say, then where does that end? Because if you're willing to seize a hospital that was perfectly running and functioning, that there isn't like a, a claim that they're not able to heal people, it's just that they won't kill people. So therefore, where does this end? Will they... Are people allowed to still run religious schools, for example? Christian schools, Catholic schools, is is that allowed? I, I wouldn't be surprised if the answer was no. Certainly if those schools weren't willing to, you know, encourage the LGBT agenda, that kind of thing. Because this is one big ideological fight in which private property has um, gone out the window. Because the government in this particular territory believes that that there is no private property if you're a Christian. And that's really what it comes down to. So this is kind of um, one of the most recent examples of Christian and Catholic persecution in the Western world. And, and I do think that it's quite possible that it would uh, spread throughout, you know, Canada, the United States, England, and so on. I don't see why it wouldn't. So you always have those people who say, well, it wouldn't happen here. 
you know, I, I hear this, like, it wouldn't happen here, at least we did prior to COVID, when we saw just what would happen here if the right excuses were made. And that's why I would urge people not to take that approach and say it couldn't happen here because of what really did happen here as, you know, churches and schools and so on were closed and forcibly shuttered and people were arrested for getting together with their, fa their families and trying to have funerals. So keep that in mind and please pay attention to, to stories like this. Please draw, draw attention to them and share them, let the people know them so that protests can happen and so that other people can find out what's going on so we know what we're fighting against. Thanks. If you enjoyed that video, please don't forget to like it. Also, I have other videos that you might enjoy. I have links in the description down below as to how you can support this work. So thank you so much.